Hi everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. We are learning clock related concepts and we have already visited few basic concepts of CTS and in this lecture let us start understanding about CTS inputs and the target of clock tree synthesis. If you have seen our previous videos, you must have come across this VLSI spectrum at least once which we have designed for you. We already discussed about floor planning and placement related inputs and these are the inputs and the bare minimum requirements that is needed to qualify that particular stage before we proceed to the next stage. Here is the list of CTS inputs and these inputs in this you can clearly see that they are almost same with the placement but in, they are not entirely same and only difference lies in the additional spec file which is needed in the CTS. And this is the file which contains list of all the constraints and the targets for building the clock tree. In our previous video, we discussed these configurations for building the clock tree synthesis. And then we looked at the H bridge, which is most commonly used configuration for CTS for balancing the skew and latency. And now let us try to understand CTS spec file information. Let us remove some portion of clock tree so that we can understand spec file here itself. Spec file can be one single file or can be a combination of multiple different files or both. Regardless, it is important to understand that spec file contains the constraints that help us build a clock tree. Let us start understanding the contents of spec file one by one. So first thing that is contained in the spec file is list of inverters and buffers that tool will use for building the CTS. So that is first thing that is present in the spec file and how do we specify that? So it will be the command will be something like this set lib cell purpose. So set lib cell purpose specifies the purpose of cell. So lib cells will be library cells we have to specify. So first what we do is in generally what we do is first we will exclude all. So we will exclude all library cells first and after that we include only your CTS cells. So we will include and then we will specify only our list of only list of buffers and inverters that we want for the tool to use so that what will happen is first the list of collection becomes empty and then it includes only our cells. Second thing that we specify in this spec file is CTS exceptions. CTS exceptions contains a lot of stuff that we will understand later on in detail. For now you can say that it contains list of endpoints. So wherever the clock should end that end point of the clock that will be flop flop clock pin. So you can see that flip flop clock pin is your end point that becomes your CTS exception that will be specified. So all the clock pins are exceptions to be included in the CTS exception list. There are millions of sync pins or endpoints in the design which we need to balance. There might be a case where there is some endpoint here and that endpoint is very far and we do not uh, have the ability to meet that latency because of high latency it can be issue so to avoid that what we do is we can create a separate skew group creating a skew group will help us because what will happen is it will try to uh, balance the rest of the skew uh, in the one group and uh, for this it will balance entirely differently spec file will also contain the target values so what all target values it needs to see so it will try to see the skew target skew target means whatever the skew that it has to balance across the design because it cannot be zero and it has to be within the limits also so whatever the range that we want in the design that skew target has to be specified which tool will try to meet while building the clock tree Similarly, we also specify latency target. So latency values has to be specified and tool will try to remain within the limits of that latency. Min and max values both are specified. Similarly, we also specify the transition for the net. So whatever the transition min and max transition we can allow on a clock net that has to be specified and the capacitance. So capacitance values 
also we specify so these are the targets that tool will try to meet and we already mentioned that let's say if the net is very big so for example this net is very big so uh, the tool will try to insert the buffer to balance the transition or to meet the transition and bring it down within the limits and if net capacitance is huge or loading is huge at that time tool will buffer it or it will further split the load also while creating a clock tree we need to route the clock also so we need to define the routing layers and generally we choose top metal layer so we need to specify min and max layer or you can say upper and lower layer for routing the clock and generally it is more than the signal which means if you are choosing lower routing layer for signals then on top of that we choose for clock so if your bottom four layers are for signal then uh, on top of that next set of four layers or three layers or whatever depending on that case to case basis you will specify min and max layer for routing and the command to do that in the synopsis tool is set underscore routing underscore layer this is the method to specify set routing layer we specify using this command so with this the tool will come to know which layers to be used for clock routing next set of rules that we specify is ndr that is non default rule and that is very frequently asked question in the interview also that what kind of ndr did you use in your project so ndr is a non default rule because by default you have one spacing and one pitch and one width this kind of rule is by default for routing all the signals and other signals other things also but for routing a clock what happens is you have a clock which is generally prone to noise so noise means crosstalk so this we all will uh, we will discuss in the videos in the upcoming in detail about noise and crosstalk but what happens is clock is Uh, very constantly switching because it will or uh, it is a clock pulse signal which will always constantly switch like this because of this nearby signals might get crosstalk also and to avoid that what we do is we will create a shield around it and we will also give double width and double spacing to it so double spacing is for reducing the crosstalk and reducing other noise noise signals that is for double width so you need to explain like this that double width is for uh, one purpose and double spacing is for one purpose so double spacing and double pitch is for reducing the crosstalk this is the purpose for specifying the spacing and pitch but double width is for reducing the latency because when you give the double width that time your metal becomes more thicker than rest of the signals in that particular layer and increasing the width gives you lesser resistance so resistance of that layer will reduce in that signal so resistance if it reduces you consequently your latency will improve so that is how we specify the ndr that is non default rule so we specify the non default rule for a clock signal the command to do that is set underscore routing underscore rule so with this command you specify your routing rule or non default rule for your particular clock signal there can be generated clocks in the design or some virtual clocks in the design so these clocks we specify in this list of specs so we specify that these are not the propagated but generated or virtual clocks all such list has to be specified in the if you have not specified in your sdc file that is your constraint file you can also specify here while balancing the clock again we will see more concepts of cts in further videos and we will come up with more other concepts also in later videos till then please do like share and subscribe to the channel and do give your important feedback in the comment section thank you